All right, welcome to a tutorial on photos and files. Uh, so what we're going to do today is make a dialog, choose a photo, and it will be able to either take a new photo with the camera or choose a file. And this file, we're going to restrict it to just images. Um, so in this tutorial, we're going to make this dialog, which returns you a file. And in the next one, uh, we're going to use uh, cloud, cloud storage in Firebase uh, to save that image and make a profile image. And that stuff's already coded, so it is working here. Uh, we're not going to cover that today, so this, this is just the picking a file. We're not actually going to use Firebase. Um, so it's really like a plugin spotlight on these three plugins, Path Provider, File Picker, and Image Picker. Uh, so those are the dependencies that we're going to use, and we're going to look into the API, how to use those. And first we're going to do File Picker and then Image Picker, and then we're going to build that dialog up. Uh, so yeah, first let's look at our um, plugins here. So Image Picker is the one that we're going to use for the camera. Now Image Picker actually can also pick a file, but I thought that it would be good to cover both of these things because File Pickers are just an awesome plugin as well if you need to pick anything else. So uh, yeah, this one, there's some iOS setup that I didn't do because I'm just going to do it on Android, but on Android you don't really need to do anything at all. And even uh, better than that, it handles all the permissions for you as well. So both of these plugins handle permissions to access the camera and the file storage. Uh, for you, so you don't need to use a permissions plugin to ask first. Uh, so yeah, that's image picker and then file picker here. Very similar, except we're gonna pick a file from the file system. And when you're picking files, you're almost certainly gonna need to also use path provider. Uh, whenever you're dealing with files in Flutter, path provider is really, really common um, to get the application documents directory and stuff like that, so you can actually download a file or just find things on the on the device with the whole path to them. So yeah, we're gonna learn how to use all three of those. So let's jump into my file repository here. So this is a class that's going to host the logic for picking a file and also uh, taking a new photo. And those functions are going to asynchronously return a file, a nullable file here. Um, this class also has a bunch of stuff with cloud storage and don't worry about that stuff, we'll just skip over it. Um, so yeah, file repository, these are the image formats that I've decided to accept because there's a whole bunch of other image formats, but you know, generally if you're working with profile images and stuff like uh, you know, users taking photos, these are the formats that you're gonna wanna actually deal with. And JPEG, this is like a really old legacy thing when you couldn't have four letters in a file extension. I'm not sure if you need to put it there, but I did just to be safe. So yeah, these are pretty much identical. So yeah, our file repository, it needs our uh, dependencies so I've passed these in opposed to instantiating them here and this is going to be good for unit tests later if we want to do dependency injection we're gonna to have to pass these in instead of directly accessing these plugins so that we can mock these things um, I've used a, the repository provider from the block package to provide this repository to my app and this is how the dialog is going to find the file repository so it's going to be able to go file repository dot of pass in that build context and it's going to pass the it's going to find the closest in encasing uh, file repository provided, which there's only one. And we'll look at how that's done in main in a sec here. Okay, so here's pick file. So pick file is going to be asynchronous, right? Because um, it's going to, we have no idea how long the user is actually going to be in there searching through their files. And it's going to maybe return a file or maybe null. So in the case that it returns null is if they just cancel the operation, they don't pick anything, it's going to be null. Uh, when they actually pick a file, it's going to be a file. So this file class comes from dart.io, so that's like a built-in type. And then we're optionally, in this method, going to say uh, what extensions that we want to allow. So here is the actual file picker. Um, so it just has a um, static method to pick files. So the result of this is a file picker result. It's not quite a file. Uh, so what we're going to do is go pick files and this defaults to one file. So it has this flag for allow multiple that defaults to false, so it's just gonna be one file. And then I didn't use the dialog title, uh, but we do need to restrict it to the extensions that we actually want, because if we want somebody to pick a photo and we, have, we know what types of photos we support, we don't want them to pick a PDF or something like that. Um, some devices I found do not respect this, so we're gonna have to double check later. Um, on my physical devices in the emulator, um, I can just pick whatever file I want, so I could pick, um, yeah, just something that would break your app if you were expecting it to be an image somewhere else. Um, so also, if 
it accepts this type here. So this is a file type, this is an enum. And uh, basically, if you give this list of allowed extensions, you must put file type.custom. There's some other stuff that you can put if you don't want to be quite so specific with which files you want. So let's look at that enum here. So there's any media, image, video, audio, and custom. I like just to be custom so that I know exactly which types that I support and just passing that in uh, for whatever use case. So yeah, this is gonna, we're gonna await this and we're gonna let the user pick something and then they're gonna get a file picker result. So the file picker result could have multiple files, right? Because this allows you to pick multiple files. We know that there's only gonna be one though. So we're gonna go um, result.files.single.path and we're gonna find where that uh, file is stored on the device. So this is a, um, a string a nullable string, right? Because they may not, not have a result. So if they just deselected the um, file picker, what we're gonna do here is just return null. Um, but otherwise, if we have a path, we're just gonna make a file class and all file needs is a path to that actual file. And with file, um, what we can do is then check the extension and just double check and make sure that it is actually what we want. So if that allowed extensions is passed in, which is up here, we're gonna make sure that it contains that extension. And file.extension is not actually built in. This is an extension to file that I wrote. So over here, I have these two little helper uh, methods that are actually, uh, these things come up quite a bit. So the, these are pretty handy if you wanna make this in your own project as well. So just splitting it with the dot and getting the last to get that extension, and then splitting it with the slash to get the actual file name, right? So when you have a whole path on a file, it might be like folder slash folder slash folder slash folder slash file name. Um, this gets rid of all of the folders if you just want to do something like rename the file. That's quite nice. Okay, so um, I have this new type of exception. So when I make a repository or a service like this, I like to make a new class of exception and make sure that the only thing that this class ever throws is one type of exception. It makes catching it a lot easier in other places of your app. It makes it so that like uncaught exceptions become very, very rare. Um, so this exception, all it takes is a message here. So that's my file repository exception. And that's just at the bottom, it's a, it's a new class with just a message. Um, so yeah, if, if they pick the wrong type of file, we'll just let them know, hey, we, you can't pick that type of file here. You can't pick a PDF when we asked you to pick a, a JPEG or whatever. Uh, so assuming that we did get a file and it's the right extension, we can just return that file. And then this is all inside of a try catch with um, just an unknown error occurred. So we're just gonna rethrow anything that happens, but we're also gonna print it for ourselves so we know what's going on. Uh, if you had real logging with Sentry or something like that to ping you, then this would be a good place to log because uh, generally this is, shouldn't be throwing. Um, say so that's picking a file from the file storage. So let's see what that looks like. So we're going to hit this button here, pick file. And then I have this weird emulator photo that I took and then I can pick that. And then some block and Firebase magic happens and it changes the profile image. So you see it did actually pick that file. Okay, so now let's look at pick photo. So pick photo is what that's actually using. And this is just kind of a, a method to help us uh, pick the accepted image formats that we want. So it's just pointing at pick file and it just picks these accepted image formats with the PNG, JPEGs, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, now let's take a look at the camera. So the camera, the method is similar. Uh, it's going to be a future file that's gonna be nullable and it's gonna be async, right? And in this one, we're gonna use the image picker instead. Uh, so when you take a new photo, uh, with this plugin, you can also um, just choose where it's going to be stored, which is one reason that we need the path provider. Uh, so we're gonna have to pick a file name for it. And then also this plugin has a controller for the image quality, and it's just, I believe, an int of zero to 100, basically. And um, yeah, ranging from zero to 100, where 100 is original slash max quality. Um, so, you know, if you're taking a photo of this size for a profile image, it's gonna be quite small. You definitely wanna try to make the images as small as possible so that they're using less data and they're also uh, loading faster. Um, I didn't actually do that in this tutorial. It's loading plenty fine for this, but just to keep in mind, you know, if you're doing like thumbnails, you do want those images to be really quite small. If you're using like a 8,000 pixel uh, photo from like a really nice phone camera, that's gonna take forever. It's gonna use a lot of memory and a lot of, a lot of data and stuff like that too. Um, so I just have an assert here as a reminder for myself and other devs if this was actually a real project that by file name, I mean uh, just the actual name, but not the extension, because the extension is gonna come from um, the, the system, right, when you pick the, pick the, take the image. Um, 
Okay, so what we have again is a try catch, and it's going to rethrow with this exception if anything happens. And now we're going to use the image picker instead of the file picker. And it has a method just called pick image, and you can get image source dot camera. So again, you could put image source dot file here if you wanted to only use one plugin, but I'm just showing you both. Uh, you can use image picker for this entire use case if you wanted to instead of using the file picker. Um, and then you can pass in this image quality. Um, it defaults to the max quality, so just keep that in mind. Those images will be quite large with good cameras. Um, some other stuff that you can put in is like the max width, max height, stuff like that, and the preferred camera. If uh, you know for sure that your user is taking like a selfie, maybe you want to open up the front camera by default. Something like that is something you can pass in, but I, I didn't yet. Okay, so this one, it passes you an X file, which is a, kind of a weird name. But it's a similar idea where if the user cancels it, it's going to return null. So then we just return null from here as well. Um, here, I am reassigning file name with this null nullable thing. So if file name is null, we're just going to make a UUID a unique identifier for this file name because um, we have to name it something. We do have to choose a file name of some sort. So we're going to get the extension from this path. This is an X file, so my um, extension doesn't actually work on it because it's not like a full file. And then we got to know where to save it. So where you're supposed to save these sort of files is in the application documents directory. And this method just comes from path provider and it just passes you a directory, but it's asynchronous, so you got to wait for it. So when we get that directory, it's got a path as well. And then we can make this complete path to know where we're actually going to save that. So this is a whole bunch of folders with slashes and stuff. And then we go slash file name dot extension. And then we need to save to that um, path as well. So we're going to save it to that path, and then we're just going to return a file uh, which like points to that path, basically. OK, so let's see that working. So we go open up the camera here. Uh, the emulator camera is kind of creepy. you got this weird dog, and we're in this room. But you can control it with Alt, take a photo, bada boom. And then changes the photo there. OK, so I got some other um, cloud storage stuff here that we're not going to take a look at. But let's just look at the dialog now. So this is the get photo dialog. And I've declared this just like top level method that could be used anywhere in the app for uh, getting a photo. And a photo is effectively a file. So this is the same signature here, right? It's a future file. And if they close this dialog, right, then this is also going to return null. Um, so this needs a build context, of course, because it's going to show a dialog. And then we're optionally going to pass in this new photo file name if we want to rename it. And then also um, some alert dialog content. Yeah, so <clears throat> what it's going to do is call show dialog, which is the material um, dialog class. And we can give it a generic type of file because we know it's going to return a nullable file. Um, so when we return await that, what happens is when we call show dialog, whatever gets popped off on the navigator, you can pass a result. In, um, and when you get that result, it's supposed to be a file. So making this strongly typed is quite nice so you know uh, what you know everything's supposed to be returning from your dialogs. Um, so yeah, we're just going to build this widget, which is the get photo dialog, which is right below. Okay, so optionally, I've made it so that you can overwrite the file name of a new photo taken with the camera. You know, if you people, if users were uh, uploading content for themselves, maybe they would want to name their own files. Um, of course, they could do that if they were, it was on their own file system. But for a brand new file, that might be nice. Uh, that's not actually used, but I'll in because you can't rename it here. Uh, but it's just there for future future use. And the alert dialog content is just this string here. Maybe I should just leave it open, take a new profile picture, or choose from files. In this case, it's just text. Um, so yeah, we're going to return an alert dialog, and it's going to have this title of choose a photo. Then we're going to pass in that content there. And it's going to have three buttons, which are cancel, uh, camera, and file. So if you want to pop off the dialog without returning anything, you just go dot pop context, and that's going to close that dialog there. So first, let's take a look at uh, take photo with the camera, right? So first, we got to look up the repository. And the repository is provided to us by build context. Then we're just going to call that method take new photo. And we're going to pass in that photo uh, file name and get ourselves a file. And then all we got to do is go navigator.pop and then pass in that result so that you can see t result 
we're going to pass file in here and then file is what ultimately this dialog is going to return and similarly choose file looks up the file repository button says goes pick photo uh, pick photo again restricts that to just JPEG and PNG and then we pop off the context for the file as well and if there happens to be an error we're just going to remove this dialog and show a different dialog um, so let's take a look at that dialog so error dialog is very similar it just this top level function to show an error dialog and it's just an alert dialog with the title error and some message so if they happen to be able to pick a file with the wrong extension if their device allowed them to then they would basically see another alert dialog that said error you can't pick a um, PDF here. Okay, so let's look at where this is consumed in the app. So uh, we have show get photo dialog. That is used in the user profile screen, which is the screen that we're viewing here. And that's in the app bar. Um, so I've in this example, you know, I've got a whole bunch of users from Firebase and they have some data and then a profile image now is the new thing. So I do have this to do here, like obviously you shouldn't be able to change other people's profile images, that makes no sense, but this tutorial doesn't have any authentication or concept of who's logged in. Uh, so this button just always exists for every every user and anyone can change them, which is obviously pretty dumb, but again, just, a, just an example, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so here is where we're calling our show get photo dialog to show that dialog, and that is in the on press of this icon button up here and show get photo dialog returns a nullable file inside of a future. And here's the content, take a new profile picture or choose from files. And then simply if the file isn't null, then we are gonna do something with that file. So in my case, I'm doing some block magic and some Firebase storage stuff and we're putting it here. Uh, you can obviously do whatever you want here. You could do um, image.file and just display the file directly. You could just save a file into your Local state, if you wanted to, uh, just test it out and see your own file. Put, you know, uh, file here and do set state if you wanted to see what it looked like. Um, so yeah, with everything set up here with this uh, different layers of the dialogue and the repository, you can see in the UI getting a file, uh, all that stuff is encapsulated in just this. Really, really powerful stuff. Um, just show get photo dialogue and then camera or file just like that. Okay, so I did talk a couple times about the repository being provided to the app. Let's just look at that quick. So um, outside of my material app, I'm providing some stuff to the app. And when you provide it, it means that it's like in the build context and you could find these things with like dot of. Uh, so we got our block and right here, I have multi repository provider under the assumption that I'm gonna have more here eventually. And this is where I'm uh, providing that repository to the app. So I'm actually creating my repository in main and that's up here. So I create my file repository. It needs an image picker, which is gonna give me an instance of that one plugin. And it also needs my Firebase storage, which isn't covered in this tutorial. So then I just call run app and pass that along. And then when it's in this list of providers here, that allows me to go um, repository dot of and give it the type. And then it'll find that, that instance there. And providing things in this sort of way is really nice for widget tests uh, because you can mock these things and tell your app what they're supposed to do instead of depending on the concrete plugins, right? You don't want uh, a unit test to necessarily use all the concrete plugins and stuff like that because that makes it a little bit more like an integration test. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial on taking a photo with the camera and with the file. And in the next one, what we're gonna do is show you how I am saving these files in cloud storage and then getting the download URL uh, so that you can view the profile image of the user.